Hey there, everybody. My name is Brian Ewald. Whether you're brand new to recording or you're looking for a better understanding for capturing acoustic guitar tones, today we're going to look at some fundamentals and some creative techniques using microphones to capture the sounds of your acoustic guitar. Although many modern acoustic guitars come equipped with some sort of pickup system, much like the piezo system in the PRS acoustics, today we're going to focus on uh, various microphone types and how the placement of the microphone affects the EQ of your acoustic guitar recordings. Most of the microphones available today fall within one of three categories. Dynamic microphones, condenser microphones, and ribbon microphones. And any of those can be used to capture great acoustic guitar recordings. So we're going to listen today to an example of one of each. Condenser mics are probably the first microphone that a lot of people think of in these recording applications. There's quite a variety on the market of different types of condensers, uh, both in their price range and the style of mic. There's pencil condensers and small diaphragm condensers, large diaphragm condensers, uh, some with a single pickup pattern and some with a variety of pickup patterns. Today we're using an Aston Spirit large diaphragm condenser, which has multiple pickup pattern options. And for an example of a small diaphragm condenser, we'll be listening to a Shure SM81. One note about condenser microphones is that all of them will need some sort of power source. The second type of microphone we're going to look at today are dynamic mics. Generally speaking, they are the most affordable. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a Shure SM57, which is probably the most common microphone that you'll find used in guitar recording applications, among many other things. And finally, we're going to be listening to a Cascade Fathead, which is a ribbon microphone. Many people think of ribbon microphones a little bit more as specialty microphones. I find they tend to be a little bit darker, but in my experience, they take EQ very well. They seem to work very well on excessively bright instruments. One thing to keep in mind about ribbons is they can be a bit delicate. Okay, now we're going to listen to each of these microphones placed in a similar spot on the guitar and gain matched as close as possible to hear the sonic differences of each one. While most of us don't have a locker full of microphones like you might find in a professional recording studio, let's take one microphone and see how we can change the EQ of it by moving it around in different placements on the guitar. To demonstrate the amount of control you have over the sound of your recording just with the placement of the mic, the first two positions are going to be very similar, about an open hand length away with the microphone pointed perpendicular to the guitar. First one pointed right about the 12th fret, and then we're only going to move it in a few inches to where the body and neck meet about the 15th fret on this guitar to show what a drastic difference in the tone can be, especially in the low end. The third position, the microphone will be about three or three and a half feet off to my left, pointed at an angle, still about where the body meets the neck. With the microphone farther away, you'll notice you'll hear a bit more of the sound of the room and a different balance of the frequencies because of where the mic is pointed. One thing to keep in mind, because the placement makes such a difference in the sound of the recording, you often have to sit very still. Any movements back and forth will show up in changes in sonic qualities in the sound of your recording.
So we just went through some options with mic placements with a single mic. Uh, so you may be thinking, uh, what about two mics using multiple mics? Uh, you may have seen people do that. And obviously that opens up some new possibilities, especially being able to pan the guitars left and right or be able to bring up different frequencies from each mic. It also opens up some issues uh, like time delay and phase issues that are a lot to tackle if you're just getting started. But let's just assume we only have one microphone right now. Let's look at some creative ways that we might be able to get some stereo panning or, or get bigger acoustic sounds, especially within the context of a full band mix. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to play an acoustic guitar track to a band mix that I have here of just drums, bass, and electric guitar, but it's gonna be a single take of it, so you can hear what it sounds like by itself, panned in the center. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to double that track, playing it exactly as close as I can to the same way, uh, so we have it, the ability to pan those two across the stereo field. In this example, let's look at how we can get a bigger sound by doubling the original guitar track, but using a capo and playing that same chord progression in another area of the neck. Another cool thing to try to get almost like a faux 12 string effect is capoing an octave higher and doubling the original part. Another idea you can do with the capo is capoing really high on the neck and effectively shortening the scale and give almost a mandolin effect to the guitar recording. Having something like this Angelus with a cutaway really helps with the access when you're capoing up really high. So as you can see, you can do a lot. No matter what equipment you have, even with a single mic and a single guitar, just being creative and trying different placements, you can even try recording in different rooms of your house or sitting in different parts of the room can really affect the way the guitar recordings come out. So the point is just experiment and maybe you'll find something else new that hasn't been done before. So best of luck in all your future acoustic guitar recordings. Mm -hmm.